Hello, hello, hello guys and welcome back to Joe's Ventures and today we're doing another episode of uh, Planet Zoo kind of updates and little update just to see what's happening with the games and today we've got a little announcement for update 1.2 for Planet Zoo which is coming about 7th of April which includes a bunch of new stuff to really help improve the game, streamline it a bit, give us some extra things to look at so we'll get started. Hey old zookeepers, we're thrilled to announce free update 1.2 coming to Planet Zoo on 7th of April 2020. This free update contains a variety of different features and improvements based on community feedback. This post will give you more information of what we will be implementing in our next update and how it may affect gameplay. So first up we've got genealogy. Building further upon your great feedback, we are ready to reveal the genealogy UI. Upon selecting an animal, you'll be able to see which animals are their parents, siblings, mates, and offspring. Each animal is selectable, allowing you to walk through animal bloodlines, so you can see close relations easily, even work out common ancestors, all handy to avoid in breeding. So this is good. So we get to see this new view here. We can see here that the parents, I assume this is the parents, just uh, because they were adopted, siblings were adopted, and then potential mates for the zebras and potential uh, partners, um, offspring. But one thing that's really cool is this uh, genealogy, so you could potentially like breed, uh, pick animals with certain genes and breed them together, which I think is really interesting. So if you want to specifically target something that you know will be bigger, you can go and breed them over there. But also what would be really cool is in the future if they add things like different colored pelts or different uh, tusk horn antler variation it'd be really cool if that could be tied into it as you could breed the healthier males will have big horns and big tusks so you could have a big tusk or elephant or a big moose or something so that would be i think that'd be quite cool even different pelts you could breed if you have like a golden tabby tiger for example you could try and breed that down the line and maybe try and have four golden tabby tigers in your zoo which would be particularly very awesome i think that'd be that would be great, like a skin pack or something. So We're exploring, exposing deep into genetic information. The first time you ever see the gene identity of genes, a simple genified code. While it's not necessary for all of you to dig into much detail, avoiding inbreeding is fine. We still want you to give a chance to see these mechanics in action. So they've gone a little bit deeper. So we've done a simple genetic code. That's awesome. Okay, so next we've got new difficulty settings. We are introducing new difficulty settings to Planet Zoo. You will now be able to choose between easy, medium, which is the current game setting, and hard. These settings will affect whether animals get bored of enrichment, which will only be in hard difficulty, how quickly animals get stressed, how difficult it will be to maintain animal welfare, whether guests will request refunds, only on hard, how willing guests are to spend money, how much guests learn from education sources, what percentage of guest happiness is required for the five stars, how fast is your staff get tired, how large of a happiness boost does the staff get from training? When loading into a zoo in any mode, you'll be able to, you will get the opportunity to choose from the three settings. For more information on these settings, you'll be able to set the question mark icon above the setting to learn more about what will change when you get a game. But you're free to change the difficulty at any time, either settings when you start a zoo, so difficulty centers will be changed to suit you at any moment. So if you really just want to make something a little bit easier you can just go and do it or make it a little bit harder because I know some people especially in franchise either find it too easy or too hard so now we got changes in animal feeding since launch we have received a lot of feedback regarding the ways keepers feed the animals in your zoos we thank you all for taking the time to explaining us the changes you would like to see in the system here we will so we're going to happen the next update keepers will now fill feeding stations in a different more efficient order by filling up the ones that's closest to the keeper first before moving on to the next one and so forth so that just saves a little bit of time keepers food prep time has simplified so that it would be the same for all habitats regarding regardless of the number of animals or mix of species previously this caused intermittent hunger in some habitats so it just streams like a little bit new keepers thoughts have been added and so you can identify issues at your habitat easier Animals in mixed species habitat will now be able to eat any upgraded version of said foods. Previously, food theft was could cause intermittent hunger in some mixed habitats. For example, all animals that eat level 1 hay will still be able to eat any upgraded version of hay. All animals that eat one level 
level 1 of Monkey Chow, where we need any upgraded version of Monkey Chow. But animals that eat hay still cannot share food with animals that eat Monkey Chow. So that just means... It just streams out a little bit, because obviously if you have big herd animals or big primates, lots of primates, animals that live in large groups, it'd be very easy to, very hard to feed them all, so this is just to streamline it a little bit, so they just can all share something easy, easier. Okay, so keepers will now sprint to and from the habitats when doing a feeding and water refilling task, when these tasks is critical, so that's good, so a little bit faster. Keepers will also now sprint when carrying their buckets, that's also good. Juveniles will cost less to feed. The amount is different per species and is estimated by body mass. So a uh, baby elephant will eat a lot more than a baby orangutan, for example. Okay, we've got something new now. Breakdown of guest happiness and guest information panels. The team has made some great changes to the guest information panels to help you learn more about the zoo, your zoo and how you can improve it. Guest education has been split from happiness and now offers you a spending bonus multiplier as well as well-educated guests, meaning a well-educated guest will want to spend more money. We'll also add in a new management system for education, more than that further down the line. The guest information panel will no, now include a new tab, the history tab, which will show their opinions on the entire stay in the zoo to indicate they might what they might have liked or disliked in the visit. The guest tab will include clicker price, environment, with the evangelism staff facilities, their feeding of the animals and security as well as other issues that may affect satisfaction so that's quite good because a lot of the issues is like you may have a problem in your zoo but the hardest thing is the game doesn't tell you how to fix it you kind of just gotta like mess around until you fix it so this allows you to better target these issues and fix them guest thoughts will now have time steps so on them so you'll be able to know how long a guest was thought and whether it's still relevant to you so that helps especially if you can have past opinions all the opinions that guests have is classes happy, green face, neutral, orange face, and happy red face. So not too different than now. Guest history will not be applied retroactively to existing zoos and guests. For the guest history to become available, you will need to play in that zoo for a while. So the history can be generated and applied to the tab. Okay. Guests will now also display their arrival date, projecting leaving date and progress of their visit. Visit. You can guess them in the tab. So here's another new view. So you can see the overview of the education oh. guest education management tab which is this you can see what animals it allows you to target which animals need to be more educated so let's say for this they're using elephants the elephants are not quite as educated as another species so you just go and check it which is good uh, we've intimated changes to make guest education clearer the guest education tab will be found in the zoo management screen we'll show a breakdown of the guest education rating which includes the average guest education level so that's good which animals your guests have learned about the most? So everyone's learned about the elephants the most. So more information on audio guys, such as how many were sold over the last year, average time of the visit spent during using them, average number of species they've educated about. So how many species have they told about? So it tells you what animals in particular might need some education. So that really helps pinpoint the issue so you can really help boost it up and a bit quicker. This tab will also show more information about Zoopedia educational research and vets that also do advanced research. In the separate tab there will also be a breakdown of each animal and how they will and how well the education is performing. This will help highlight any issues in the light of the zoo and how it affects education. This would also include another tab for conservation boards so that's good. So everything's just being a little bit more expanded so you're able to better find out where these areas are being what areas are affected and going to them and making sure they're uh, can be fixed okay so this is another good one increase social interactors all animals in game including deluxe edition and talk to fact animals will now trigger their social interaction animations more frequently so that's good because often they do it very rarely so that means you'll be able to go up and see your animals hug each other and play with each other and i think that'd be very cute it really gives them a bit more life to them to see them play and not just walk around and want to eat which is awesome okay there's another one reducing the negative impact of staff buildings after building a shell around your staff buildings or placing decorations around them the negative impact radius will be reduced the radius will be reduced up to 50 percent to get the full 50 percent your starting uh, security rating 
What the facility must be or oh, not security scenery rating for the facility must be at 100 percent so basically just reduces the radius because a lot of the times i remember when i was playing in my campaign playthrough i basically won the game just by moving around all my staff so they didn't get uh the bonus for seeing the staff facilities and there's a search added to ui zoopedia ui so when using the Zoopedia, you will now be able to search for the species by typing, as well as able to scroll through the UI. So that helps, so you can just go Bornean Orangutan and find it, so it should be fine. Research shared across all franchise zoos. Completed research will be shared across your franchise. If you load into a franchise zoo, the research data will be saved, but that the highest level of research will be carried over to all franchise zoos. It is important to note that if a staff member was researching a research category where the jump is less than level one, when you load into the zoo, they will no longer be assigned to that research and you'll need to reassign them. In comparison, the research should continue if, for example, they were researching level one Chinese pangolins and level one was completed in another zoo, then you load back, they should be researching level two. In order to make sure you've got all your research data across all your franchise zoos, you need to load into each zoo individually. This is due to the fact that we would, if we were to do this in the background, it would create incredibly long loading times for you. So to make the games more seamless when loading zoos, your franchise zoo will load research individually once you load into them. Once your franchise zoos are all up to date, they will create a new baseline for research shared among them until you upgrade research further. Okay, so that's good. So that just means instead of having to do all your research when you start a new franchise zoo, you basically have it once you've researched it in one zoo, you can have it in all your zoos. And someone who doesn't really play fan tries doesn't affect me too much, but it's still cool to see that there's a lot of updates for people that want to play that. And here we got something I'm really happy for. We've got path improvements, path system improvements. We've added a variety of improvements to other pathing systems. Staff buildings will connect to staff paths with a staff path, and standard paths will connect on with a standard path. So that's good. So we don't need to worry about guests walking into our areas because you don't need they'll just connect anyway which is good and really helpful guest facilities will continue to connect with stand, uh, standard paths you will now be able to click over normal paths and replace them with a staff path similar to how to change the texture of a path and vice versa double clicking a path piece will now open the path editor with the path type and texture selected to continue building with that's just another really good uh, quality of life thing that they're doing you also add ability to step up to set setup Oh no, we've also added the ability to set step height for half a meter increments, making it easier to shape your paths across terrain. So that's good. It's just, yeah, the pathing does need a bit of a change because it snaps. It's snapping is trash and it feels really clunky to use. So it sucks that you can't really add more to that. But these little adjustments will help make the pathing just that little bit more bearable. And here we have now path settings, uh, player settings to units, mission, uh, meters to feet. You can now specify preferred using of management measurements in the settings menu, inference tab, units. These values default to the English standard use, units. This will not work for Zoopedia descriptions. And added creativity. Of course, we couldn't complete a free update with some new enrichment items, building pieces, and foliage. Among other items, we'll be adding new tropical and moss rocks, as well as a much requested glass planes. Uh, pieces we can't wait to see what you build with these update 1.2 will arrive alongside blood fixes and gameplay tweaks that will improve your planet zoo experience so you get the full update notes when it goes live in april thank you for the wonderful support and feedback on planet zoo we're grateful to have such a caring enlightened community shante so yeah that's pretty awesome and really awesome to see the uh, that frontier is obviously listening to people to see what they like and trying to implement it in ways that are helpful for everyone because ultimately we just want a game to be the best it can be. We all paid for it. We all love it. I enjoy it. I just, I just, at this point, I haven't been playing it much just because it's still so new, and it, it's hard to like get into a game that's, cause if like if it was if all, all the stuff that's going to be in the next two three years was in now, I probably would be playing it because it just it just feels unfinished. And this while this updates is good, it's just unfinished for me to play. But I'm still glad I have it. I still play it occasionally. And I really do enjoy it. So one thing we also have though is we have a sneaky preview of some of the new pieces. 
So here we've got this new like glass panels that look really good. It reminds me of some like really modern zoos, which is always good. So we can see, uh, it, it reminds me of something like uh, from San Diego Zoo or some more up-to-date zoos. It looks really good. I really like that and be able to use it in the in as much better glass than the other ones It'll look more like a greenhouse it's just so many the glass panels in this one are just so better so much better and then we also see uh, some bamboo in the background and I wonder if that's going to tease anything because a lot of people are saying oh it might be something to do with South Asia or something Southeast Asia but I have a feeling it might be actually something with South America because bamboo also does grow in South America and considering it's a very nice building style and i think it might be just because south america's got basically nothing in it we only have a couple frogs iguanas and the tapir which isn't even in technically south america so i'm thinking we could even maybe get in the future hopefully a south american pack because south america is so diverse especially with the amazon rainforest as you've been learning from my green hell videos so many different species you could I, I even made a list of just like 30 different species that could go in the exhibits alone just due to the size and then I have like another one that's like 130 different animals that would fit in these smaller exhibits but yeah you could have jaguars, maned wolves, speckled bears, ocelots, capybara, uh, golden lion, emperor temperans, temperans I mean, black capuchins, spider monkeys, uh, sloths, armadillos, rays. There's a really huge amount of diversity in South America that would be greatly covered in a pack. So yeah, I really hope to see that comes in the future. Really interesting to see what comes of this. See what more updates we get and I'll always keep you posted. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this little video just running through what we're getting in update 1.2 and hopefully you guys like and subscribe and bye bye.